You found yourself on another episode of Locked on Bulls. On today's episode, we are going to be breaking down the fact that DeMar DeRozan and Nikola Vucevic are two of the worst defenders in league history per a certain stat. But we're going to break that down a little bit differently, tell you the real from the fake. Also, the Bulls biomarket candidates and the Bulls GM, Mark Eversley, could be a fave for the Charlotte Hornets job. We're going to get to all that and more right after this. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. That's Pat, the designer, host and creator of the Windy City Breeze and host of the Chicago Bears podcast over at ESPN 1000. I'm Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls and Chicago Bears Central YouTube pages and podcasts. And today's episode is brought to you by PrizePix, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepix.com slash locked on NBA and use code all lowercase locked on NBA for first deposit match up to $100. Pat, there's a, there's a time... Every time that I pick a st- uh, or that we pick a um, a topic that I just know is going to turn into a fun conversation for us to have, and today, so this uh, this uh, statistic was t- tweeted out as far as that forty eight worst players with a uh, defensive EPM, and uh, and th- there there are a bunch of players that are worse than Trey Young. So the conversation started off with <laughs> Trey Young being the worst defensive player, and these are the players that actually are worse defensively than Trey Young at the yeah. top of the list. That Nikola, shot was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Nikola Vucevic and DeMar DeRozan lead that list with Steph Curry, LaMelo Ball, Laurie Markin, Kay Cunningham, Jamal Murray, Tyrese Halliburton, and Austin Reeves all on that list as well. When you see that, now, you see that we, we've always said, like, we know Nikola uh, uh, Vucevic is one of the worst defenders that we see, especially this season. He's been pretty solid. He's usually pretty solid on ball defender. Pick and roll is absolutely terrible. DeMar yep. DeRozan, I don't have a lot of positive things to say about uh, Emar Arnella Rosen, but I mean, there's no D's in that at all. But how do you feel about, about seeing anyway? How do you feel about seeing <laughs> oh, you man, feel... They, didn't, they didn't even play. It was, it was, it was, it yeah, yeah, listen, the soundboard didn't even agree with that pause, but it is what it is. How do you feel about seeing that uh, that Nikola Vucevic and uh, DeMar DeRozan listed some of the word, worst defenders in the NBA. See, here's the tough part about it, right? Because the I'm not going to say that it's wrong, mm-hmm. but I would say that there are defenders that I believe are worse than DeMar and Vooch in the NBA. I think for DeMar and Vooch, it's very situational. And what, what that says, says to me is, right, yes, the analytics are right here. Yes, the stat is correct. I would agree with the stat because of when you see DeMar try to play defense. If I'm going to sit here and say there's one quarter of solid defense or there's six minutes of solid defense or 12 minutes of solid defense, right, like, That means that there's a lot of time in the game where you're not being a good defender. But the one thing that I'll say, especially more so for DeMar than Vooch, I think, but but Vooch, I think you can include in this, is when they want to play defense, all of a sudden there is this trigger that they can turn on that they are better defenders in those situational moments, right? We've seen DeMar... Uh, be a be a big uh, guy in the fourth quarter as far as stealing the basketball, playing the passing lanes, uh, forcing turnovers, forcing guys into Alice Caruso that forces a lot of turnovers, right? Doing the things the right way. I think with the with DeMar and Vooch, not to say that they're not poor defenders more times than not, but it's more a matter of want to than skill level for me. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, the thing is that DeMar... I, I I no, I don't think that that that's a one or a skill level. Demar's just a bad bad defender, bro. I've seen like there's so many moments where all of a sudden he locks in, and we're just like, "Where's that been?" The rest of this. When it's been one of those moments that 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 you felt like that? Uh, I would say, who did we just play the the um the Phoenix game where we went on a drought for like four minutes and he was out there. I thought he did a really good job defensively. I I think that there's been moments where it's like. Now I realized we're not scoring the basketball right now. I might be, I might have a wrong game. Maybe it was Minnesota. No, the Minnesota game. Minnesota. Where the Minnesota game is we ended up winning. Where, you know, we we were struggling to score the basketball. And I want to say it was the third to fourth quarter in between that stretch. And it was like, 
got to get stops here, boys, because we're not making buckets. I, I And I feel like in those moments when, like, you got to have AC on the floor, AC's like, we got to lock up. Like, we have no... What's for the, some the reason, thing the ball is, ain't going in. I think the moments that I see DeMar is like... DeMar is, is, can be smart at times where he, like, gets the steals. But to me, I look at that still. Steals doesn't turn you to a good defender. Um... To me, like, because you can get right. skills and not necessarily be a, a, a good defender on ball. James Harden. It's a great point there. James Harden, uh, James Harden led the NBA in steals for what four years yeah. in a row it was a horrible. And, and so, that, like, I know Demar did, and he can and he can absolutely be active on the defensive side of the ball. And, may, and maybe that's just me being a little bit harsh on him, but like. De- DeMar and Vooch, I, I, like, I saw this and it didn't surprise me at all because, you know, yeah, we've seen even Vooch, like, against some centers, especially Nikola Jokic, he, he seems to turn into an all-world defender when he Weird, plays Yo- Jokic. Like, I don't know <laughs> what just, happens when he does it. Randall, he just like, I, yeah, it's just like, that. hey, listen, you, you, you not about to score on me, not you. That's literally like... <laughs> oh, him? He could put 50 on my head tomorrow night, but you... <laughs> <laughs> you exactly. giving me 10, 10, and 2. <laughs> like, wait a minute. No? Like, so it, it's it's just that weird thing. And, you know, it, we've been getting ready to do this conversation before we started recording, put out a great thing. That's that's kind of the difference between what the statistics and even the analytics will tell you and what you yeah. see on the basketball court. Because there, there are times, and, you know, even me being a little bit harsh on DeMar, there absolutely are times where they can kick it in uh, to a different gear defensively. And I think that comes down to, like, yeah, I mean, well, let's, listen, we've had a top 10 or top 5 defense so far with those guys being on our team. Yeah. So there's something to be said about that. Like, the, and that's where it comes down to there are two different types of defenses. There is the one-on-one man-to-man defense, and then there's team defenses. Some players are really good within the, the structure of team defense. And we've seen DeMar and Vooch be solid enough in team defense to where – it doesn't stop your team from being top five, top 10 defensively. But the thing is that I just, I, I look at it and say, all right, what could this team be if they were active more, uh, more times than not? Right. I think, I think that's the part where to me, listen, I'm never going to sit here and tell you, I want DeMar Garden the best player at the end of the game. I'm never going to sit here and tell you, I want Vooch Garden the best player at the end of the game. I'm not telling you that they're great defenders, but I also, I'm also taking where we're at in basketball into account, right? Mm-hmm. Like, this is a this is a weird era where you're classified as a good defender if like your guy just that you just don't consistently get lost on defense, right? Like there, there's great defense. AC Jimmy Butler, um, I'd say Io DeSumo, uh, Drew Holiday in his younger days he hasn't been as good lately. Uh, but there's Jalen Brown, right? There are great defenders in the NBA, and to me right now the great defenders are what we used to just call good defenders in the league. That's now true. like. I mean, right, like, you think about great defenders. Like, the first one pops in my mind is Ron Artest and Tony Allen. Like, they literally would see guys on the other side of them and be like, you're not scoring tonight. Like, you're going to get 11 points and shoot four for 27. That don't happen in the NBA anymore. Now you have a league where it's just like, listen, if you make him score a hard 40, you did your job today. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I'm also taking the era into account where you really don't see shutdown defenders anymore you just see guys who are good enough in the moments. And I think that DeMar has those moments, especially with as many close games that we've had this season. The Bulls in clutch games have been much better this year. And I think it is because in those moments, we've seen DeMar have an uptick in his defense, as well as Kobe White, as well as Nikola Vucevic, guys like that. Do you think that... I don't even know if this is this can even be said. Do you think that DeMar or Vooch could be more active defenders if they didn't have to do so much offensively at times? I don't think Vooch can because I think it's, it's just a league where his feet ain't fast enough. I think Vooch is doing the best that he can out there. I think that if you get him one-on-one, he can do more. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of screens and stuff like that. Like I think Vooch is at the mercy of whatever the league has become. But in those moments, like we said, right, versus certain centers where they want to go one-on-one with you, he can he can stand in there and stand the test of time. Um, Demar to me, I think can though. Like I think Demar, like we've said, it's it's very. Are you going to be engaged in this moment? Are you because how many times I'll tell you this: the moments for me to irritate me with Demar aren't when he's playing somebody one on one or when he's trying to get over a screen. How many times this mug gonna lose somebody that's standing in the corner that just runs right behind him? 
Yeah. Like, those are the moments that irritate me with DeMar. The moments where it's like, you're on defense, but I can fully tell you're not paying attention. And maybe that is because you're focused on going down and scoring the bucket on the other side. But that's that's very tough on the defensive side of the basketball when, like, people are just streaking behind you or they're just left wide open in the corner because you still think he's down here in the post. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, these are the guys that we got, right? I mean, listen, I don't we just know. had a full conversation about defense in this NBA. Like, that's crazy. It's 2024. <laughs> we had a full segment on defense. That's that's. Hey, I'm just saying, man. Like, and, and we didn't mention this young man one time. We did not bring him up at all. Um, I think we did pretty good, except when you started the segment. When you started the yeah. segment, we did bring him up. But I uh, mean, Trey yeah. Young is terrible defensively, but I don't care what no stat. And that yeah. goes back to to analytics and stats yeah. versus what you see with your eyes. And that Trey, yes. He's the worst defender in the NBA by far, and it's not even like he has the ability to. It's like not even are you – not only are you too small, you're not engaged, you don't try, and you've kind of just accepted that somebody else is going to have to pick up your man. I saw him in the Bulls game. uh, I think Kobe got over a screen, and he just went to rebound. And I was like, you're not seven feet tall so why are you going to rebound like, what are you doing down there he's You're like, not even be- he, he's, he said he has a better chance of that than defending anybody so he might as well <laughs> had a better chance of getting this basketball over the seven footer than stepping up on that jump shot Yep, that's it. That's it. But next up, man, we're going to be talking about the buyout candidates for the Chicago Bulls and the buyout market. That's funny. That's so tough, dog. Before we get into that, though, I got to talk to you guys about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. We are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's demon time on prize picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. Want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Miller, comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in Prize Picks community each week. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for first deposit match up to $100. Speaking of uh, Goblin time, Hayes, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Dave Dupree actually was wearing the Hobgoblin socks <laughs> on uh, at the halftime show, and that was kind of crazy to me as well. I don't know if you saw that. That was hey man, listen. But they were Louis Vuitton, dog. They were Louis Vuitton. They were Louis Vuitton, they were Vuitton socks. Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, Vuitton, Vuitton kid socks. Is that a pearl? He got a pearl. Yeah, it's a pearl on the socks, bro. Um, first of all, the fact that he had on the Deuteronomy sevens is wild to me, hey, bro. That's that never man, gonna. That man had on the part the Red Sea fives, bro. That was <laughs> that's insane, crazy. That's that crazy. man had on the 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 Thanksgiving Day turkeys, bro. <laughs> That's wild. Bro. Wow. He definitely was dressed like a killer ping, uh, uh, pilgrim. But hey, bro, with, that man had on the goddamn. Uh, I got, <laughs> I, I got dinner at five, but I got to wipe out a nation. It's seven. What is that? And then you pair that. It's not just that. The outfit and the shoes are terrible. So let me be clear that they're terrible. Yeah. But it's that paired with the fact that he's slowly transforming into CeeLo Green that just makes the whole situation just crazy, bro. Yeah, like, that looks is... like CeeLo, bro. If you just if you just scroll past, you would think that that's CeeLo and not think anything of it. Bro. Fam, how's his head turning into the planter's peanut, bro? What's going on with that, bro? Like, it's a lot of craziness out here. Let's stop joking on J- uh, JD. JD do shoot people, so. Hey, listen, listen. <laughs> Y'all stay safe out there, man. Uh, with that said, the bio market is ahead of us, bro. We know that. The- <laughs> hey, hey, I know it's not getting bought out. <laughs> them socks, <laughs> them socks. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised now that he's that he wore them and posted them. <laughs> they probably are sold out, bro. Like, them socks is sold out. Socks, bro. Like, walking through the hood with them socks on. <laughs> I need Louis V, baby. They got a pearl in the side. You can't get these just off the rack. 
<laughs> that's four hundred dollars socks is wild, bro. If y'all uh, want to hear us go in more on this, tune in to uh, Views from Bleachers podcast. We back. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but the buyout candidates, bro. So uh, we've we've had a few buyout candidates from across the NBA already signed. Uh, places that Young is signed. Spencer Dinwiddie is signed. Kyle Lowry has been signed. That so it's already c- coming down. Uh, kind of the two best ones that I have still out on the market for Chicago Bulls personally are Joe Harris and Danilo Gallinari. I know Bulls fans are going to say, are they really going to push the, the, no, but guess what? They bring a skill set that we need and we need more three point shooting. Um, do you, are those two guys on your list as well? Do you have any other favorites that you like to bull, see the Bulls go after on this bio market? I think that those are probably the guys that are uh, Gallinari is Gallo still got it though. That's my problem with Gallo. Well, we're, the thing, the reason why I think Gallo is a real legit possibility, remember, we almost signed him instead of Goran Dragic. Yeah. He decided to sign with the Boston Celtics. Yeah, I do remember. Um, yeah, I guess Evan Fournier signed today, if I'm not mistaken, right? Didn't he sign somewhere today? Did he? I thought I thought I saw Evan Fournier because I know that there was a, there was a, uh, the second that he got bought out, Vooch was like, oh, they freed my guy. So I don't know if there's a relationship build up there. I would say that maybe that's one to keep an eye out for. Um, but it, if if he's not available, but I just, I don't know, man. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. When it comes to the buyout market, I do believe Joe Harris is probably the name that sticks out to me the most. But mm-hmm. does it feel like the Bulls are interested right now? Like last year, we left the trade deadline going, we're in the buyout market. Yeah. This year, it doesn't really feel like we're going to the buyout market. I'm not going to lie. I think that the Bulls are kind of living with what they have right now. And as crazy as it is to say, right, they're still playing pretty good basketball over the last few games. Now, a Magic game that you probably should have been able to win, you end up losing that one. That's one that hurts a little bit. For some reason, um, you know, every time we, we, we go down there, like they got our number right now. It, I don't even know if it's Paolo. I don't know if it's Franz. Like they, they just got our number right now. They one of those teams this year, uh, and and almost every year it seems like. But outside of that, right? Like I just I don't feel like there's any name that is of overwhelming need that I feel like we would actually utilize in the buyout market, and that's what makes this market interesting to me. Like I I would love to have Joe Harris here, but where's he getting in? Javon Carter's minutes. I know Javon Carter uh, played better uh, last, okay. last last game. I think he can come in and get those Javon Carter minutes, um, add some more size, some more consistent shooting. Um, and then if Javon Carter does keep playing better, then hey, you have that. Then I, I listen, and I, I'm not I'm not reporting on this in any shape, form, or fashion, but I will say this. I am start the more research I've done, I'm more concerned that P Will may not be coming back soon. So uh, but you feel like there's as, some length to that injury. You got to say that quick. Yeah, gotta you got to say, say that, that real quick. That you gotta, you got, yeah, that was right. That was, that was almost wild too much space in between. It was almost <laughs> yeah. too much. I mean, when you look at the, when you so when you look at the injury that he had, tip, typically it could be a four to six up to a year return injury, and so we'll see, man. We'll see. I think the or I think uh, Fournier is probably the one. I know a lot of people are like, why do you keep going back to Evan Fournier? He's the one that interests me the most. Because one relationship built up with Vooch, too. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they played together in Orlando, right? Yeah. 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 So they got so they got a relationship built up already, and, and Vooch was excited that he got bought out. But how old do you think Evan Fournier actually is? He's like 29. I don't he's, know. He's older than that. He's 31, though. But like that, that means like there's still basketball life in that. It's not like, can we go get the 34-year-old grizzled guy that's just trying to hang I mean, on? Like, is there I mean, anybody? In like- that case, Lance Stevenson is 32. If that's where we're gonna go with that, <laughs> I mean, listen, that's, just there's a difference there. Lance Stevenson can't shoot. I don't care how many hot games he got. Yeah, you know I mean, like <laughs> Lance Stevenson, boy, you knew you. Were, I ain't gonna lie, you could have been in the first quarter of the game, and if Lance Stevenson hit two suspect threes, you knew you was probably losing that game, bro. He was like, yeah, I don't know what to do with that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a fact. When you look at this, so Kyle Lowry, he's going to the 76ers. Spencer Dinwiddie going to the Lakers. Marcus Morris, who did sign. Uh, no, he didn't. He's expe- he's expected to be bought. He hasn't officially been bought out yet. You got Thaddeus Young signing with the with the Suns. That leaves Joe Harris, Killing Hayes, Robin Lopez, Victor Oladipo, Danilo Gallinari, Forkman Korkmaz, uh, James Booknight, Corey Joseph, and, of course, Evan Fournier. It's a gross list. Um, 
The fact that Morris also Killian, be interested. Killian I'm not Hayes, lie. a former seven overall pick in a draft, nobody's picked up yet. There hasn't even been any rumors. He's terrible, though. Yeah, I know. Let's just like he's not good at the sport. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to say. I get it. He was a high draft pick. Guess what? You missed. <laughs> Like honestly, dog. Like how you, he he's another one, bro. He's a three and D player that can't shoot the three and can't play defense. Yep. Like I get. Listen, can I sign him to the to the Windy City Bulls? Like you got to go down now, there. Now you gotta definitely would be interested to bring him in on the Windy City Bulls. He's only twenty two. Like I just yeah. I, I don't want to see you in the NBA anymore. And it's not to say I don't want to see you achieve your dream. I don't want to see see you go out there and actually be able to dominate. But I've watched Killian Hayes basketball far too much because we play the Pistons as much as we do every year. And every time we play Killian Hayes, I'm left going, "This ain't the sport for you, bro." Like, what else you got in your <laughs> in your arsenal? Like, is it little, little baseball? Maybe can He's you gonna be a world champion pickleball player, bro? Pickleball. Hey, listen, pickleball's coming up. That might be something he might be interested in. I mean. We got the uh, which which Olympics coming up? We got Winter Olympics coming up, right? Yeah. Maybe he tries a little curling, yeah. right? He seems like I've I've seen him, you know, hit, hit the ground enough trying to guard people yeah. that it seems like he's already down there. Might as well just slide that rock down the ice. Maybe that one works out for him, mm -hmm. or maybe he's the broom guy. He's probably the broom guy in curling, you know, because he's already used to just being sweeping up the floors after. Get, do, your, do your Ari, bro. Do your I'm Ari. Right. This is the fact that we spent more time roasting Jermaine Dupree and Killian Hayes is wild, bro. Go ahead. Is, I, I wanted Killian to be good. I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> Lord, man. He, he, yeah, he's bad. Uh, right, hey man, before we uh get into the final topic, we do have to tell you guys all about eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts. For your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home a win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, Pat. I wish they had eBay Motors for Killian Hayes. He That's does not fit. Crazy. Um... Before we get out of here today, Pat, uh, our, the Chicago Bulls GM Mark Eversley is listed as one of the favors that could potentially go over to the open role, which I think is, is the president of basketball operations. That is that the role that's open there over yeah, in uh, yeah, yeah. over in, in Charlotte. So uh, he's got to get a promotion for him to leave, basically, because yeah. he's still under contract. Yeah. So what do you what do you make of that? Do you think that there's a chance? Do you think this would be a big loss for the Chicago Bulls? Because we always we talk about them to collect collectively, Acme, Acme, Acme. But like, you would think that as a GM, and I and I've said this to you before off air as well. Like, I I do think that Mark Eversley is more engaged in maybe free agent talks than anything else, but maybe even trade talks. You know that he was instrumental in Demar Derozan coming over here. Yeah. So how how big do you think potentially losing Mark Eversley could affect the Chicago Bulls? I would say it would be big if we had actually gotten some free agents since the first time we got free agents. <laughs> Like I would say that it's a it's a serious thing, but like right, if I'm not well, I I guess it still is right because Tory Craig was a part of one of the teams that Mark Eversley was a part of, right? And that's how we mm. end up getting in contact with him. Um, Philly, was Tory Craig in Philly, that feels right. He so, was in Philly at one point in time. I think so. Really. So I think that right, he was a part of that. Like the, a, a lot of the pieces that we have brought in have been through Mark Eversley connections. So I do think there would be a loss there, but do we, do we need better connections? Like, like is that, because if we're being a hundred percent honest. Oh, so yeah, Tory Craig never played for Philly. We're both tripping. He played with the Nuggets. That was the, that was the link. There. Oh, so he was connected to AK there. 
So he would have been connected with AK there. Yeah. Um, but either way, right? Like I just, it's not to say I don't think that Mark Eversley has a value here. I do think he has a value. I think that he's he's the GM. He's handling a lot. We look at AK so much, but he's the one that's doing a lot of day to day contract talks, bringing guys in, talking with the guys, calling other teams. Right? Like, I think that there would be some level of loss there, but would it be like a catastrophic loss? I can't say that because I don't think we've had a catastrophic gain since the first season that they got here. Hey, I feel you there. I feel now. Okay, are you worried about it though in the future if we do try to go back to a place of player acquisition? What are we going to get him beat? <laughs> like, <laughs> who else? We, who's, he's been with Philly most of the time, right? I gotta, I gotta look up everywhere. So, Eversley has, has he was the assistant GM from. in Toronto from 2006 to 2013. He was VP of player personnel in Washington from 2013 to 2016. And he was VP of player staff with Philly from 2016 to 2020. So he had two jobs where I want nobody from. He got a relationship with Kuzma. I don't even know if I want Kuzma, but at least he's a talented player. Like, I don't, like, I don't know. What, <laughs> I mean, like, would it be a loss in some capacity? Yes. I'm not going to say that it wouldn't be a loss, but I, I guess, is it a loss of biblical proportions to quote Theo Epstein? Right? Like, is I, it, well, the thing is, is that I think kind of because we're so used to AK being the mouthpiece, we rarely hear from Mark Eversley. Like we just don't hear from him often that yeah. it's kind of easy to think that maybe he's not as instrumental as what he is. And so maybe he does do more work behind the scenes, but I mean, the way I look at it is, is that you're going to lose people, right? You, at the end of the yep. day, it's going to happen. That, nobody's going to stay here for forever. And honestly, maybe bringing in a new GM to replace hey, him hey, you, may you be know, the best thing for the team. You, you know this is locked on bulls, right? And you just said nobody's going to stay here forever. <laughs> I mean, we're going to stay here forever. I mean, no, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, like, we just got out of a... Well, what a fifteen-year-long relationship with the, with a dude that stopped being good at eight. That's funny. <laughs> so I mean, you just, for the kids, man. You, you just never know, bro. Like, and and maybe maybe bringing in a new GM may actually open up something to where you're bringing in some new set of eyes to help look at the product that the Chicago Bulls are, are placing. Maybe not as attached to some of the players. So if that does end up happening, it could end up working out for the franchise. Maybe even hey, maybe. Maybe. What if Mark Eversley does leave his GM and they move Billy Donovan up to the front office and we have to get a new head coach? You know what? I'm not going to lie. And I, and I think that there is something to that. And, and this is going in a completely different direction, but don't be surprised if that's a real option. Don't be surprised with that, which I would be fine with. I think Billy has a, a eye for talent. Yeah, he does. And I yeah. think he's a better college guy than he is a pro guy. That's a good and leading that scouting department, which is one of the roles of the GM. Yes, you could actually sell me that. We already know that he has a relationship with the Reinsdorfs. Well, we he has know he's not leaving. That's the, exactly. We he know he's a, going. He nowhere. has a secret contract extension. You know what? You may have just sold me and probably, and you know what? It won't happen because now we've we've talked <laughs> just, about it. Hey, we've we talked about it. Podcast AK was like the plans in shambles. Blow it up. <laughs> 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 but. Uh, if 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 Mark Eversley did leave and they move Billy Donovan up to into the front office, which we which is becoming more and more of a thing, like it used yeah. to be rare that you see a coach move from coaching to the front office. It now it's become like, it. yeah, it's, it, that's true. A lot of them it's are really bad horrible. at it, but it, but you're seeing that happen more and more around the NBA now. So if it were to happen, um, wouldn't be shocking, and it could end up like I said, that could end up being the best case scenario as far as getting some change to this team. And I think that's the that's the part where it's interesting because why why else do you keep this experiment going? Yeah. Why else do you give the secret extension? Why else do you because you you can tell or you have a player in the building that doesn't want to deal with Billy Donovan anymore, and you're just like, that's fine. Yeah, you know I mean, like, why are you why are you holding on to Billy? It's not like Billy's amazing. I get it. Like, from a development standpoint, yes, players are developing. But it just, yeah. there's too many, like, almost looking at it through that lens, can't you see all the moments where it just feels like Billy Donovan's over this? <laughs> Bro, that's funny. Like, I mean, but I, I, would, I, I honestly, as many qualms as I have with Billy Donovan as I a mind him in head coach, I don't think I'd have those same ones with him. as he, The things that he does well, I honestly think could fit into a GM role. 
Yeah, I would not mind him in the front office. I think that he's got a good eye for you. I mean, I don't know who had the final say on P. Will, so I guess I can't say he's got a great eye for, for young talent. But the one thing that I will say, I don't know where the line stops, but usually you're getting your coach in there to work with or your coach's coaching staff to work with uh, some of the later draft players because you mm -hmm. want to see, okay, is this a gem? Is this somebody we can work on? I mean, <clears throat> I mean, you look at some of the young guys we've had that have come to the NBA and had moderate success, haven't had a ton of run, but like Javon Freeman Liberty was a player that looked like he was going to be pretty good. And then they tucked him on the end of the bench um, <laughs> up in Toronto. But he looks like somebody that can play a little bit at this level. End of the Adam bench. Even even in the G League, he hasn't even been on the end of the bench. Like, well, um, I don't even think he's been in the G League. Has he been on Toronto bench all season? Uh, I thought they signed him to a real deal. No, he signed to a two way. Oh, is he? Oh, maybe yeah. they've been sending him up and down. But somebody at least you can send up and down. I mean, like, I, I think of that, like, back of the draft talent, and we've been fairly successful there where Io DeSumo, um, uh, 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 Julian Phillips feels like a, a little bit of a success story. Uh, Adama Sinago to me is somebody I look at, and I'm like, he can play. So, like, maybe he's that guy. Maybe he's the guy that's like, yeah, go get this college player that was there four years and just knows what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, maybe we could do that, or even outside of that, he, I, I do think Billy Donovan has an eye for talent. He just doesn't play him. Like, so he would be like, hey, I got you this guy. You play him. Like, no, you no, he's play saving him. it. He's saving all of it. Because <laughs> who's the uh, Chris? Chris, why am I blanking on his last name? Our assistant coach. They stepped Chris in. Chris Fleming. Chris Fleming. Slide right over, dog. No, no, wow. I'm good on Chris Fleming. We'll talk about that on another day. Not a, uh, not a Chris Fleming guy, bro? Uh, look, Chris Fleming's cool, but I think people over, like, everybody talks about that run that we had. And first of all, he took over coaching for Billy Donovan halfway through that run. I think we were three games into that nine-game run. Yeah, and yeah. then on top of that, Billy Donovan was still, co like, he still was ho he hosting still practices game, over bro. Zoom. He was Zooming in. It just was the game. So... Nah, but I, I I think we saw more in-game adjustments in them nine games. No, we, we, we didn't see more in-game adjustments. We haven't we seen in-game adjustments since those nine games. I no, tell you that's that. not true. We saw in-game adjustments just against Minnesota. We <laughs> talked about how good the in-game adjustments were. Yeah, let me just for that. reference, <laughs> Javon Freeman Liberty's played 15 games in the G League so far this season. 21 points. He's averaging 21 points per game on 30, 34% shooting from three, 43% shooting from the field, six rebounds, four assists, one steal, and right under a block per game. He's cooking in G League. That's pretty good, actually. That's yeah, like, it's really good. Really good. good. That's, that's he's he's checked bit. into two NBA games this season. Has played a total of six minutes. I thought he. I thought he played. I feel like he played five of them against us. I thought he <laughs> played against us a little bit. Am I am I mistaken on that? I thought he got a little bit of tick early, or maybe that was preseason. I, I think that, no, I don't even remember seeing him preseason. But let's see. So he's played two games in that, and those games were against. No, nah, no, that he played against the Clippers in Minnesota. And those both games were in January. Uh, I don't know. Must have been another black he did guy with dreads. Preseason, but he only played seven minutes against us in preseason. Oh, he, okay, so he did play against us in preseason. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, I remember seeing him out there. So, um, but yeah, nah, I, I don't know, man. Like, that would be, that'd be interesting. Did we just unlock something there? Did we, now we're not Major. reporting this. Don't y'all go start writing yeah, articles. Please don't. Don't. Please. Anybody who's listening to this, do not start. Uh, <laughs> Hayes and Pat, the designer of Locked on Bulls, report that. <laughs> Please do not, because if I see my name in any articles, I'm smacking somebody. And, and it's I'm, not speculation either. This is literally us this working is meat through head, a meathead meat conversation. That's all it is. <laughs> Chill out. Go they ahead. They're going to cut that whole end part out so that they can just post the clip. Hey, man, follow us on everything at Locked Up Boys. You can follow me on everything at Pat the Designer, C Red Nation Stand Up. You guys can follow me at CEO Hayes, man. We want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Bulls. We are free and available on every podcasting app platform of your choice, as well as YouTube. For Pat the Designer, I'm Hayes. This has been Locked On Bulls. Peace, y'all. I don't like something here, bro. Pat the Designer of Locked On Bulls reports that Jermaine Dupree sucks. Are indeed on sale. <laughs> Billy Donovan to the front office, baby. <laughs>